Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and this is my daughter, Jedi, who wants to hang out with daddy. Chris, you've changed since you became a geek father. You are correct. I love my daughter more than anything. More than any gadget, more than any piece of technology, more than anything. So, family always takes priority for me, and I appreciate being able to spend time with my daughter the way I do, thanks in large part to the patrons, some of whom are behind me right now. In fact, treble maker Kim became not just a patron, but she also became a subscriber on Twitch overnight, because you can sub to me on Twitch and become a part of the chat room even if you don't want to be a patron, or you can be both. Head over to chrisperillo.com for more information on how to be, become a, p p p a patron. As I'm channeling Porky Pig, supposedly. That wasn't a good, that wasn't a good replacement for apparently. Uh, today I am going to be reviewing the LG V10, which I have right here. Not in my hand. Uh, and it's not on, and I'll get to uh, that in, in just a moment. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, it, it, it isn't booting up. Yes, it's it's not it's not booting up, Jedi. And I don't know why. I, I plugged it in overnight to make sure I had enough juice for today's review, and uh, it, it does not want to turn on. So I am still going to review it. That's okay. It doesn't need to be on for me to talk about it. Uh, that first part for everybody is free in this TLDR broadcast, streaming live onto YouTube. Um, if you want to join the chat room... That you can do, head over to live.perillo.com. Yes, it's back! That actually redirects to my Twitch profile where I am streaming gameplay pretty much every day, as well as AMA. So I do Let's Play and AMA every day at live.perillo.com. So the second part of TLDR, after I'm done with the LG V10 review, will be uh, an AMA specifically for the patrons, the people who are able to tune in live and not open one of daddy's drawers. Let's go ahead and keep that shut. What do you see in there that you want? Hang on just a second. The third part of TLDR will be Tech News Views. And uh, Tech News Views is just me covering the tech news. And I got a doozy today. Like a really awesome bit of tech news that just hit my radar. I'm very excited about it. Masking tape does not belong in a drawer, according to my daughter. Why, why, why are we going into the drawer? Drawers are not that fascinating. Can I move on with the LGV10 review? Here, you play with this tape. Now, I remember a time when uh, we talked about tape, and, and we were talking like recording tape, like listening audio, audio tape. Remember that? Remember that? Am I the only one who still has cassette tape somewhere in the house? I don't know. Oh, yes, I do. I, oh, thank you for that. That's, that's awesome. Jedi may be getting a cold because I, of course, am getting over a sickness, as is my wife, Diana. She's still a little coffee, not to be confused with coffee. This is my first cup. So, uh, I've got some bullet points. These I shared with my patrons about a month ago. The LG V10, for the most part, is a good phone. Uh, there, there are very few things that I could say to dissuade you if you were considering getting the LG V10. It has quite a few unique features, not the least of which is being unable to boot up this morning. <laughs> it's not really a feature. That, that must be a bug. What, what? This is a battery tester, sweetie. I know. It's a battery tester. See, we put batteries in there to see how much more juice is in the, in the batteries. That, that, is, that is a label remover, sweetie. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, so I thought, and this is something that I wanted to demonstrate, uh, and if you haven't seen screen, yes, it's a, it's a filter for my LED lamp in front of me, sweetie. Um, the second screen on the LG V10 is probably its most unique feature, and it is kind of cool. In fact, um, when I gave this to Diana to use, whoa, sweetie, let's be careful with that. No, 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 we're done with the drawer. Uh, that is not sharp in its current state, but it could get sharp. Uh, there's no way you could possibly open it, though. Let's just be careful. Uh, I'm going to put my knee in front of the drawer. The second screen is above the first screen. You can't really tell at this angle, but the second screen is up here. It's just this strip. And it can be customized somewhat with icons or potentially a label. So when I handed this to Diana, I had already pre-customized it and had her name in there as Diana Perillo. And she saw it and she's like, whoa, that's really cool. You know what's really not cool? Turning on the TV. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and turn that off, okay? <laughs> Uh, she does not want anybody but daddy right now. So daddy has to kind of keep her entertained. Uh, here, play with this big battery pack because it's doing you no good in trying to recharge the phone. There you go. So the second screen is really unique. Um, it, it, unfortunately, again, I can't demonstrate it for you, but it, uh, 
it uh, it really jumped out uh, to Diana when she was using it very, very briefly. Uh, you might remember in the vlog, she had some problems with her iPhone. So I said, here, use the LG V10. And she was she was impressed with it, weren't you? I was. She's here now to possibly take what? Jedi away so that I can continue with this review unabated. Uh, it had very, uh, uh, in, in terms of, is she ready for mommy now? I think so. All right. It had a very good camera, and when I say very good, that really should be stellar, honestly. And LG has been making some marks, not just with the LG V10 and that second screen being unique, uh, but you might remember the LG G4. Uh, LG's done exceedingly well. They've gone above and beyond in terms of Android devices and camera quality, and I would say they would be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the iPhone's camera. In, in many cases, and in certain situations, I think the LG V10 did a better job with not just video, uh, but certainly with uh, uh, still f photos as well, with the, uh, the LG V10 camera. It was impressive. Impressive. Uh, and of course, the camera software that LG has created. Uh, as much as I'm inclined to appreciate all the, the the knobs and dials, and you know, if I wanted to get in and manually tweak things, um, LG's definitely packed it into their camera app. No doubt about it. It is it is an example uh, or a shining example of where an OEM can really add value specifically to the device, um, and and making a very very tweakable. Uh, I guess, camera experience, bringing it uh, within the realm of DSLR, or well beyond point and shoot, in terms of feature set, maybe not necessarily in terms of quality, uh, but I, I certainly did appreciate that in the LG V10. Um, I, I still found myself using automatic settings, or just like, okay, just I want to take the picture and move on with life. I don't want to tweak everything. Some people do. And so LG did not disappoint in that department. Um, and of course, with video as well, I didn't upload any sample videos or, or shots. I know other people do, and I, I just haven't gotten into the, the flow of things with that. I, I, I kind of take a few shots. I kind of get a feel, uh, you know, uh, pretty quickly uh, and know whether or not I'm looking at something that is, is better than what I've experienced before on par or, you know, not at all. And I would say the LG V10 uh, for the camera, uh, not just, you know, on the front, but also on the back, um, it, it impressed and that's one of the reasons I, I like getting new smartphones these days is to check out their camera because that's, that's what people use them for, right? We use our smartphone cameras all the time. Um, it, it, in fact, I had mentioned this in my original review write-up uh, for the patrons, uh, best in Android class. So I, I, I'm, really, I'm really ranking LG up there, right, like right up there. I, I, I haven't found uh, many other Android cameras that have been as impressive as what LG has been doing. As long as they keep doing that, I think LG's got a shot at uh, you know becoming one of the bigger known brands as far as Android is concerned. If they if they keep pushing that that camera aspect, uh, mentioned the uh, terrific uh, default camera app, not the Google camera app, the LG camera app. Uh, I thought it was uh, rugged. This this particular uh, the the model that was sent to me. This is a review unit. The, this model that was given to me uh, has a very rugged back. And in fact, I'm going to take it off. Not uh, not just because I've been taking it off all morning to try to reset the battery, try to get things going. I don't know what's going on with this. It's not liking me. Here we go. We'll get it off. So it's got a, a replaceable back plate. And if you can't tell by the reflectiveness, uh, it's kind of it's soft, it's 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 grippy, it's uh, rubberish, and I like that because uh, you know it gives me a chance number number one to further customize the LG V10, uh, but also the fact that uh, it, it just feels like it's not going to slip out of my hands, and and that's nice, especially with a larger screen device. Um, I would put this squarely in phablet territory. That seems to be ruling the roost in terms of Android devices these days, like all phablet. All phablets, all the time. And I would put the LG V10 in that category because I don't feel I could use it with one hand. And so if I can't use it comfortably in one hand, I feel that I would want to, you know, basically uh, call it a phablet. The phone tablet, big screen, nice big screen. Uh, so I thought it was a it was a good screen, solid screen in terms of what I would expect from a smartphone screen. There was nothing that was horrific about it. I I don't rate screens. I look at the screen. D does the text look sharp? Yes. Do the graphics look good? Yes. Okay, I'm good. I mean, there there are people and entities that all they do is study screens and, and their effectiveness and, and color gamut, et cetera. But I just go by feel. 
That's honestly. And it didn't feel like it was lacking any, the screen at all. I, I, it was solid. It was good. Solid. Can I say solid? Well, of course it was solid. The glass it was solid. Didn't drop it that I know of. Of course, Jedi did get a hold of it. So it is possible that it dropped a few times. Um, I like the fact that the, uh, the front camera, you can see it possibly if I can get it reflected. There are two cameras. There's a actually a wide angle um, a wide angle selfie cam, which is kind of neat. Then they put the the cameras there. And you say, well, wait a minute, that's kind of on the screen. No, no, no. That second screen I was talking about is like right there, right there. And you can see my LED lamp that I was referring to earlier, right in front. It's it's in, in it's reflecting right now. Uh, so the wide angle selfie cam was nice because how often have you had to get further out to get both of you in there or to get you in the shot? Uh, it makes sense. To have a wide-angle lens in a selfie cam, it really genuinely does. Uh, this is something that uh, I would hope you know kind of catches on, but it's another thing that it just makes the LG V10 stand out from the competition, at least competition that doesn't necessarily have wide-angle selfies. And given how many times I see selfies out there, I'm guessing that would be an extreme value uh, to you as a user if you were looking at at this. Uh, another uh, another note I made is something that I, I guess I just briefly covered. Unfortunately, Diane is not in the room now, but. She really liked the device. She she uh, it, when she started using it, of course, she's somewhat familiar with Android and kind of knows her way around it. And and LG provided a, an Androidy experience, not full pure Android or anything. LG still you know inserting its own uh, feel in, in the software, and I, I I don't necessarily like that. And I'll be getting into you know what I don't like about this device in just a second. Uh, but to me, Diana's experience is probably more indicative of what the average person is going to see or not see, and she liked it. And, and so, you know, I, I, I would give it a passing grade if only for that. She didn't feel that she was taking a, a step back in using iOS in general to get her stuff done. She didn't feel that, uh, you know, it, it was, it was uh, a lackluster experience. She thought it was a good experience. That's her perspective. That's her angle. But she also mentioned something else uh, that I am going to bring up. Then I have to bring up because that's just just, just for the sake of completeness. Um, the second screen. So I'm going to go back to that. It's unique. And the challenge that I think OEMs have, and well, any gadget manufacturer really, is to create something that's unique but also useful. And the second screen has the possibility of being useful, but it kind of felt like it got in the way more often than not. And it, and it kind of tilted into the realm of gimmicky rather quickly, at least for me. Uh, you know, and, and it would be kind of neat to, to honestly, this is what I would have liked to have seen. Uh, maybe have that that that's that uh, ticker, like a customizable ticker, like the latest tweet mentions, or you know, uh, you know, imagine if 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 Twitch had some kind of push notification system that went in there, and, and I mean, just nothing but the the Twitch stuff that you want to see, or YouTube, or Twitter, or Facebook, and. Unfortunately, that level of, of development, I, at least I couldn't find it out of the box uh, or, or downloadable, um, to be able to turn that into a prime notification center. You, the reason why it got it in the way is because not only was I dealing with that second screen and that, that, uh, that, that area with, with icons or, or maybe a name or, or a label, you still have the notification center that if you swipe down with Android, uh, you still have that notification center to contend with. So Android can't necessarily accommodate that second screen as much as LG could in hardware accommodate that second screen. And that got in the way. It, you know, I missed taps and, and missed swipes and trying to do one thing when the system did another. Uh, and that became frustrating. So I would put the, the ticker or the screen, sorry, I can't really call it a ticker. The second screen, this, this, this layer here, uh, right on the border of nice, but in the realm of gimmicky, like right, right there. Like, you either like it or you don't, and, and you can't necessarily think you like it until you actually use it for an extended period of time. And then you can decide for yourself whether or not it gets in the way for your use case. Um, I didn't find it redundant. I found it to be nice. Unfortunately, the software, I feel, did not keep up with the hardware. That's a, it's another case where the software needs to be running in parity with the hardware, and it just didn't. It did, Honestly, it just in my experience, it did not. So it's kind of like, ooh, that's cool, but then you get past that point. And you can't customize it uh, deeply, and, it, and then it just gets in the way. Uh, I felt that uh, LG's software experience uh, got in the way as well. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of over that idea that an OEM uh, that you know might be putting together an Android experience needs to make it look different. 
I don't like that. Gets in the way, I think, not just with performance, uh, but also with uh, general UI inconsistencies. Um, it, it's it's something that, uh, again, I would tell LG, look, double down on your camera stuff. D- double down on you know making hardware features that aren't gimmicky, like the selfie cam, the, the wide-angle selfie cam. That's not a gimmick. That's far from a gimmick. Like, that's actually useful. It doesn't get in the way. You can use that. It's usable. Uh, <clears throat> you know, that's good. It's customizable. Uh, uh, plates that, that might, uh, you know, not just be customizable in terms of color, but also texture. Um, that is where I think an Android OEM could excel. Uh, the software stuff, unless you're doing it for a reason, like a camera app that's very, very in-depth and can do more than uh, Google's default camera app, uh, it just gets in the way. And, and, and honestly, it was just not, it's, it, it's, it, it wasn't as clean as I would have wanted it to be because with Android, you can't customize everything. OEMs have never customized everything stem to stern. It's just been one part they've customized, not anything else. And I know you can replace the launcher and that attenuates the, uh, the impact of a, a skin somewhat, the, the OEM skin, but not totally. And, and potentially you're actually adding another layer of UI or another, uh, uh, experience, another ethos, another design ethos. Um, oh, uh, another thing I noted with uh, th- this particular phone, uh, you've got logo barf at the bottom there, and, and you see the LG logo. I, it, I mean, it was nice-ish in the sense that if I'm looking at it straight on and I'm using the device, this kind of blends into the background, so it wasn't like standing out. So this is both a positive and a negative. Positive in the sense that the uh, uh, the logo is dark, as is the frame around the front of the LG V10. There's a reflection there of the, in the camera. Uh, but uh, bad in the sense that it exists. I, I just don't like uh, logos on the front. Not not a fan of that in, in general from, from uh, any device manufacturer. I, I don't want to be reminded uh, uh, about what I'm using. I know what I'm using. You know, if you want to do anything, put it on the back. Do it, do it in software, maybe, uh, but down there, eh, not, not really. A fan. It didn't need to be there. I'll just put it that way. It didn't need to be there. And I feel this takes down the, uh, the attractiveness of the device. I'll be, I'll be flat out honest with you. It takes it down a notch for me. That's my opinion. This may not bother you. This, this little logo here may not bother you at all. It bothered me. <laughs> Uh, LG has also kind of made a name for itself in terms of placement of buttons. So on the back, uh, you've got the volume rocker switch and power button, and it's got this thing where if, if it was working, you'd be able to tap, like knock, like tap, tap, and it, and it turns on. And by the way, I've been tapping this thing all morning. Uh, it's obviously not working at this point in time. Oh, no, I'm angry. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a little, uh, uh, emote that Twitch subs can do now. It's kind of funny. Uh, so, back to the device. Uh, I'm still not used to this. Having the volume and power uh, and the controls here in the middle, even though it's very comfortable, whether I'm using it in one hand or, or the other, the fact that I can turn it on or off, um, you know, having the volume there, I guess, kind of makes sense. But at the same time, wouldn't it make uh, just as much sense to have it in hardware uh, uh, right around the area where you would, uh, you know, have your thumb positioned when you were holding it in one hand? So I, I found myself not using it as intuitively as it was designed to be used. Uh, if you're used to it, great. If you're not used to it, it may get in the way. You could get used to it if this becomes your primary device. The challenge with using a lot of devices, however, is that it's still, it's different. And different sometimes is not great. Uh, you know, uh, searching for the volume controls on the side or the top, um, just knowing that on an LG device it's going to be in the back, you just got to remember and, and sometimes it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. It's in the back. Where, where's the volume? I can't find the volume. Oh, it's in the back. It's in the back. Where's the power? Oh, it's in the back. Uh, I do like, out, out of out of all the LG features in terms of button placements, uh, and I realize I'm kind of going back and forth between what I like and what I didn't, but I ha- also have to note that because of its placement, uh, being able to double tap to kind of wake it up or to put it to sleep is kind of nice. I, I do like that feature, and I don't think they would have been able to, to achieve it in the same way if they had the uh, the buttons uh, placed anywhere else, but I've I've experienced that with LG before. It's different. Um, I wasn't sure, and this is something that I think o- Android OEMs need to do a better job at. I'm not going to slag LG on this alone. Um, I'm I'm just unsure of its software security updates policy. 
there's no, it's, it's a question mark. Like, it, you know, when I'm using it, it doesn't say, hey, by the way, we're always going to be update, updated with the latest version of Google. Like as I'm using the software or looking somewhere in the software, it, it never said that. It never, it never indicated any way whether or not I was going to get updates. And that's a big stress. Honestly, with a lot of Android devices out there, if you're not talking about a, a, a true Android experience or a pure, not 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 a Motorola pure-ish experience, but a, a, a pure Android experience, if you're wor working with stock Android, you know you're going to get the latest updates. That's, that's directly from Google. It's a massive question when you have an OEM in, in the middle. That a, a huge question. And that bothers me now. It really does, and I think OEMs, if they customize software, they should customize it to the point where say, hey, you know what? We are going to be in line. When Google rolls out a security update, we're going to integrate it within a day. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, I feel good. I'm like, oh, I feel confident that I could use this over an extended period of time versus buying the Android device or recommending the Android device only to find out that they're never going to update it. Question marks. And I think that's, that is a huge, huge, huge shortcoming. Huge, gig massive shortcoming, like gigantic, head wound, bleeding shortcoming, uh, not just for LG, but for any Android device. If you don't know its update schedule, if they're not clear, if they don't communicate that in software, if they don't uh, uh, let you know that you can deal with this device in a great degree of confidence and know that you're going to get updates versus uh, they don't know. Uh, maybe it might happen. Maybe it won't. Who knows? And I can't, in good conscience, cannot recommend a device that has a questionable future in terms of software. It's a shortcoming. But again, that's not just an LG thing. I'm just bringing it up because I didn't see any indication and I don't have any indication uh, that LG is going to make that happen. Um... So, I, this is something else that I've said about a lot of Android devices. Despite the clear differences that I've mentioned in this video, uh, it, it starts to feel or look like uh, the same, uh, you know, or, or as on other Android device experiences. It starts to feel the same. Like, it, it, a lot of those features kind of melt away. Like, you just stop thinking about the back plate and its ruggedness. You stop thinking about the, the ticker screen because sometimes you want it to get out of your way entirely. You stop thinking about certain things uh, and you start using Android. And that was something that Diana had brought up. Like, she said, wow, it was really, it was different. It was clean. She liked it. Uh, the, the, the overall experience experience, but she said, yeah, but then Android, Androidiness kind of, I don't know what her phrase was exactly, her phraseology, uh, something along the lines of, it was Android. Like, she, she noticed the jitter in Android, uh, clearly on this device. And so, you know, after you get past the, the, the unique hardware features and uh, you start using it, it starts to feel like Android. And that's okay. Because that's why what you might want is that Android compatibility. Um, but I don't know if the ticker that I'm sorry, I keep calling it a ticker. That second screen that's at the top that I can't unfortunately demonstrate. It will not turn on. That's probably a hardware issue. I'm, I don't think that's indicative of their entire line. I'm not slagging them for that. It's just an issue apparently. Um, the uh, the the biggest value of the LG V10. The biggest driver beyond, you know, the, the changeable uh, backplates and you know, the other, other hardware features that, that you might see is going to be the camera. The cameras, I should say. Not just camera. Cameras, I think, are the biggest uh, reason that you would go with an LG V10 as an Android experience or as a smartphone in general. The camera. If the camera is everything to you, uh, put LG V10 in your shortlist. I, I, I would. If that's what the only thing that you cared about, like if you don't care about future software updates, including security updates, which I would not advise, uh, you know, the cameras, it's solid. Now, if, if, if you're, you're still inclined to like, you want a good camera on a smartphone and you like LG as a brand, but you're not sure about that second screen uh, or even the, the, the back plate, I, I'd go with, or at least the design of this particular uh, uh, series, uh, the LG G4, I think is a contender. So LG G4, LG V10, um, now, having talked through it, I, yeah, I, I have no qualms in recommending it for certain features uh, as, as a good-ish Android experience. But Stellar all around, no. It, it takes a lot for me, for any smartphone device, any, from any manufacturer, any. I'm not just talking about Android, any. It takes a lot 
to, to really win me over anymore. I mean, I, there are a lot of options in the field and a lot of choices out there. And, you know, a lot of people have to make decisions where they have to spend their money on this stuff. I'm lucky enough that sometimes I'm able to get a review unit to talk through the experiences, to have the experience for myself, to let you know what's gimmicky and what's not. And there's it's a mixed bag with the B10. It is. So I don't give ratings. I don't. I, I, I don't. I'm just giving you my experience. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, for paying attention. I am going to move on and answer some questions from my patrons, as well as from maybe some Twitch subs if they're tuned in as well, because they get the chat there from Twitch. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody. I'm going to move on to the AMA and then talk some tech news. Found out one thing. Okay, the first bit of tech news I got to tell you about. You're going to freak. Some people didn't quite get exactly why I uh, why I wanted to talk about it this morning when I, when I shared it on Twitter, but I'm going to dive into it now. If you're not a patron... You can become one, head over to chrisperillo.com for more information, then you can hear me talking about today's tech news, as well as uh, doing an AMA. Uh, if you don't want to be a patron, that's okay. You might be able to sub to me on Twitch, become a part of the chat, watch Twitch streams, uh, interact with me, me there. I do open AMAs. I'm trying to do them every single day. Do a lot of streaming. This was a live stream. So, thank you for your support in whatever way that you wish to give it. Uh, I want to give as much as uh, I possibly can back to you. Okay, on to Tech News Views for the patrons. Today's free podcast highlight was brought to you by all of my active patrons from chrisperillo.com. If you want access to the full TLDR episodes, both audio, video, past, present, and future, which can be up to an hour long or longer, with even more tech insight from me every weekday, plus other bonus content without ads, and support me at the same time, <clears throat> you can sign up to become one of my supernomies too. This is just a brief taste of what I'm producing for you daily. Again, get more through chrisperillo.com.